too. Just these summons in the vision game. I think they've won the vision game when they're versus this Slark. And oh. fight kick off 5v5. Let's and go. Ashton is going to try and start the action off. Nightfall taking the level one Doppler to make sure that he doesn't give up first blood and VP as a team can get it themselves. They will lose DM. But first blood going the way of VP. Did they, they got a boar as well, I think it was, right? I think a boar on the side of the die or two. At least one. Unless that was the first summon. I think I saw two down. Oh, yeah, they did. Okay. Snake got us. Yeah, CS, yeah. Okay. Nice little invasion, but I love the 5v5s. It always looks like everyone's going to die. And then they just, you know, just one person gets away. And it looks like Live to Win's going to be the winners out of this one, getting three of the runes. They may have not gotten the first blood, but they at least get all the bounties. So they do actually get the gold lead because of that. And it was not the mid player who did get the kill as well. It was the Enchantress. So some extra wards and stuff to play around. And he's going to put two defensive wards to be able to watch Immersion's movements, to be able to watch for the Batrider for GPK. And we'll see how this mid matchup goes. We saw Miracle, of course, versus Limp the other day, and he dominated it. We'll see what GPK is going to be able to do versus Dream. I'm looking at the, the side lane matchup this game round. We've got Nightfall PL and Kingslayer Ench. Uh, up against the Afterlife Legion and Immersion Tusk. Uh, are we going to see any sort of musical lanes, or do you think this is, uh, you know, both teams are going to stick with what they've got here? I think they're just going to stick with it, yeah. I actually, I really like this PL lane. I think this is excellent for Nightfall. I feel like he's going to get complete free farm down here, which is which is problematic. I feel like PL is the king of this game when I look at the, the matchups here. Sure, Ember Spirit's there to deal with him, but I just feel like he doesn't have, he doesn't have to worry at all about the supports, really, as this Phantom Lancer in majority stages of the game. And with free farm, it's going to be great. Top, I feel like FN, he won't be able to get the same similar free farm. I feel like Beastmaster is always able to apply some pressure, even though I feel like both these safe laners have pretty solid free farm. Ember just gets pressured naturally more from these type of heroes. And, uh, you know, obviously this Ember pick coming through is the last one. Uh, uh, you know, FN, this game, what, what sort of his, uh, his objective going to be as the Ember in, in terms of how he's going to look to build up? Is he going to try and fight very early on? Like, are we going to see some sort of earned vessel build up? Or, or are you going for sort of this Maelstrom? Or He's the PL solution. He needs to yeah. go the... He needs to, not even just the PL, the summons solution. He has to just get the way to clear the waves. FN just missed two last hits in the most... He just literally stopped attacking. He just missed two to a range creep. Okay. That was FN... Point. I just, I he's mean, got a, he's got a focus. Just stole I mean, after, after as well playing such a, a good lane last game, right? He was crushing yeah. it with the CS on his invoker. Safe lane changes everything, you know, he's oh. used to that mid. Boars, they'll get the one up top. They do, the, both of them are dead though, which makes the lane for FN will be a little nicer. That harassment won't be there for the next 30 seconds or so. And bottom is just, I mean, I'm not even really looking at bottom lane because it's not even a lane, to be honest with you. They both did, they both cut the waves and made it this awkward positioning that now Looks like we're gonna actually have the lane meet each other. I mean, and, and, and is this sort of an issue for, for the Dyer? Like, did Dyer want to, to be meeting the PL in the lane and playing into his face? No, not really. They, they no. actually can't, they can't slow him down or contest him at all. And the Enchantress is actually quite frustrating for a hero like Legion Commander. You just get poked every time and it's a lot of damage that does go through and they can't threaten at all. I think, I, I actually love Brian's point. I never really thought about it that way, but when you're, I guess, you know, when you're playing the carry so much, you think about this is, it's not the Legion you're afraid of, it's the follow-up. And the Tusk follow-up, just, he doesn't provide anything for the Legion Commander. I mean, to the point where, I, does sort of the Tusk need to stay down here at all? Or, or it's sort of better off with the Legion being alone? Up top, we see save, get gun on. Uh, I think he has to stay down here. I think he has to just be able to pull waves and everything. It's, it's going to hurt Immersion's game a lot, though. I feel like this Tusk is going to be level one for quite some time. It's just that they can't swap the lanes because they can't put the Grimstroke versus the, the Enchantress. They just they just can't have that. So they have to keep the lanes as is, and they have to have this Grimstroke up top to post kill threat onto the Beastmaster with the Ember. They just have to accept what it is. Because they do have the Slark, you know, that's the big win, right? Dream is in the mid lane getting this big amount of farm, beating the Batrider nicely. Can't win everything. No, oh, I'd be interesting to see what what Dream is able to achieve. I mean, as you said, the last two times we, we saw the, the mid slark on Miracle, he had a, a pretty impressive series, impressive couple of games. I mean, and, and, and this game sort of in general, when you look at what else they have available, is it, is it would you consider there many threats for the slark this game? Like, like how easy is it for Dream to have a uh, a good time on the slark here? It's it's not. 
terrible until the later stages, I feel, when the PL gets his items and the books online and the Nyx has mana burn. That's my big concern, is his poor mana pool. Like, this PL, like, mana burn from the book, mana burn from Diffusal, mana burn from Nyx. It, it's gonna get to the point where this Lark can't reset fights, and he needs to be able to. So, we'll see how much he can get as GPK. Yeah, I mean, he... he might be able to get ooh, yeah, very close there, the two of them. Top lane. Immersion makes the move, joins the other two, and that they're able to take down save. And yeah, mid, this is, uh, you know, pr nicely done there by Dream. Nearly went down, but of course playing smartly with the one charges. Uh, and now it's GPK that's had to take the walk back to base after trying to, to get in aggressively and clear that way with the Firefly. And, and this is going to mean probably by the time he comes back to the lane, Dream's going to be pretty much level six. So pretty much six, then yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's become impossible for for GPK to do anything on his own ever, really, against this lock. And they actually did, I mean, Immersion's just level one running around. He actually, you made, you made the right call. He left, he left bottom completely. He's just playing around top to shut down the Beastmaster. And it actually works. They get that kill onto save in particular. And now he's just, he's just threatening the Beastmaster. He's slowing DM down a lot. Afterlife's getting just a, a bit more than him on the other side. I mean, it, it's got to be a bit of a problem though for live to win right that they don't have any way at the moment of setting up any sort of pressure onto this pl right because you know as you said down the line the pl is going to have strengths against the other cores anyway uh, this is you know, quite terrifying to to let nightfall have this sort of a beginning i mean we saw last game you know, he didn't have a good start on his blood seeker but yeah, he was able to easily carry the game you've got to be a little nervous if you're playing up against this pl that's just been uncontested for the first five minutes it's a it's a last pick PL. It's a very little count, like oh, almost last pick PL, right? It's a very little counter. It's just the Ember Spirit who has to bail out in the mid game. It's I mean, there's there's just not much they can do. There's, there's not much ways that they can actually set up to gank down bottom. It's just going to be difficult. They have to have they have to have the Ember Spirit make the rotations later on. FN when he gets at least when he gets level six, he can because the Doppel is going to be low level. We'll see if he does look to do something like that as bottom afterlife. He's going to have TP coming in from Immersion to help out Nightfall. Does still have the Doppel and uh, might not even need to use it here as they don't quite have the, the speed to get on top of it. And with Immersion being forced to show his hand bottom, it's going to mean that VP can play a little more confidently into the face of FN top. And that was what? Was that, was that the two TPs that they saw? They did, right? They saw the both, yeah. So they know that the two supports are going to look to be playing map, playing on the bottom side of the map right now. So they just have to kind of cover each other. GPK has to be a little cautious of himself farming. He tries to get the double stack. He will get it. And they're now putting their attention. They're actually making the long sweep over. This is nice by Live to Win. This is going to be pretty unexpected. Since they did make the smoke all the way from bottom, they might be able to get themselves a good kill. FN, a little low on resources, but... Well, now it's kind of... If they can. Yeah, they're still able to close in, even with saves, spotting them out. The combo, very potent with these two supports. Snowball and Inkswell will will set up for, for, for most of these kills at this stage. Yeah, I, I, love the, I love when I see teams do those kind of swings, right? It's like bottom, they saw UTP, so you try to make this unexpected move. They just a full swing to top to get themselves a kill. And, I mean, slow down Beastmaster more. DM, his his book is going to be much slower than we are used to, are used to seeing. He's still, he's still around the eight minute, nine minute mark. Dream. Dream. He's, he's going to play aggressive in onto GPK. Save. Is able to come over. Helps out, holding back the two of them with the Impale. Shards down, blocking GPK's escape off. They're trying to chase GPK. Can he get out of here? He can't. Surely Dream's got the movement speed, and he does. Dream gets him with the final dart pack, takes out FN. GPK, and off to the side, FN. He's starting to catch some of the backliners. Looking to body block DM's attempted escape. He'll be able to set up for Dream to swing around, pick up a second. Yeah, just play. They're playing around the Slark there. That was really nice. To the invasion from Dream to contest these stacks. And I think that's how they have to just play around in this early game. Just, just constantly play around the Slark, because he's going to be that big powerhouse. Him and FN being able to make those active moves. I think Afterlife, you just have to accept that this is just a Legion commander. He's just, just leave him alone. No, he's on the, he's in his own world. You guys have to play as four while this Legion just gets his own stuff done. Great warding coming out from Live to Win. This deep aggressive ward not seen, watching that whole entire uh, ancient area and also that one to watch GPK's movements on the south side have not been dewarded. Radiance top tower is under attack. I mean, with, with these bots, you know, GPK, where, where, where are you looking to try and head first? Who, who's sort of the, the easy grab? What, what, what's the kill combo it's, on your lineup? 
I mean, the super easy grab is just going to be the Legion. The other other kills are just going to be very difficult. I think he can just satisfy himself getting a kill as he's got the fairy trinket as well too. This should be a pretty easy one for them. Yeah. Afterlife very far forward. Yep, no chance of escape here from Afterlife. No. As uh, it will try his best to run, but they'll slowly burn him out. Yeah, we're still, sort of set up around mid at the same time. Let's win. maybe see if they can find something in return. FN starting to sweep her out. See if he can get the setup. But, uh, chains not going to be committed here. As DM able to make it away. Immersion also unable to, to swing around quite in time to, to cut off his escape. I, I like. I, I want to see them continue to make these aggressive moves. These three in particular. The Grim can also get involved, but just Tusk, the Ember, the Slark. Look to play around those timings before the PL can turn up in particular. They know that Nightfall is going to... Once he has the Fusel, this PL is going to look to show up to most of those fights. So get themselves a nice advantage as they do. They're going to get themselves four bounty runes. Oh, that's a lot of money. I mean, we saw at least the first time around, they got yeah, three of them as well. Last time was even, so yeah, e easily coming out on top here with the gold gains. Getting close to that Fusel for Dream. That's the big one for them to really start... Pushing their issue forward and just getting these constant kills on the map. Immersion as well as Grimstroke will just be that. As Brian pointed out as well, it's just these kill combos to enable the Slark even more. And yeah, they're taking over the enemy uh, enemy triangle a little bit here. Even though there is those defensive wards now placed, they do see everything. They've set themselves up nicely. But VP, they seem okay with this. They seem fine. Just If they're just sitting back farming, like Nightfall, Happy Kid is just... Finishing up his defusal at a decent time. GPK pushing out the slightly difficult lane. FN getting some decent tower damage though up top. He also has a haste rune, so this could kick him off to good fights. If he doesn't just die, a save. Let's see if save can set this up. So he has got the, the haste, so he's, he's going to be quite speedy here, FN. And actually already just getting in past the tower. They're trying to make a move on to DM. DM turns, drops the raw down, follow up Impale onto the two of them. They're taking out Immersion. DM into the trees, jumping forward though with the remnants. FM is able to finish off the kill. Over on the side, Dream okay. comes in with the, the wraparound. He's in onto the Enchantress, turns towards save, but extra TP's coming in from VP now. Dream having to use the rest of the Shadow Dance to get out of here. Change does catch onto the PL, but GPK is able oh, to get dream. in range for the lasso. Grabs back Dream as VP getting dove aggressively there by Live to win. Are able to definitely make them pay for it, getting the big kill at the end of it all, taking down Dream. He's got his defusal finished up, but those those deaths really do hurt, especially when the PL's now got 20 seconds to farm while you're dead. Some nice aggressive moves, but good rotations from BP at least to get themselves back in it as GPK, he's actually okay. GPK's going for a hood for himself this game. Kind of trying to get a little bit tankier versus that early magic damage that comes out. And they're actually setting up for bottom. Afterlife. Save is already on his way down. A save. He's got the control, Dream. I mean, Dream's trying to help out, but Afterlife's already dead. Can Dream get anything here in return? He doesn't have Shadow Dance to rely on. He's just fighting on aggressively into the Firefly. He's out to the side. Backups here. FN. He's ready to jump forward, chains down to the two of them, catches GPK and with a roll around from Immersion. G they also a takedown save. And that's, I, I'm, I'm, hope, I'm always hoping to see them, like we were mentioning earlier, is they have this zero cooldown lineup. So love that they make the move down there, even though it's a little low on remnants. That's probably the longest cooldown they have. They punch back immediately. No hesitation since VP, they do have to wait. They have to rely on Lasso. They have to rely on Vendetta as well in some of these setups. They'll live to win. 3k gold lead after this quick moves in the last few minutes. And immediately they swing over to mid. Just keep, keep the snowball going. Keep the Slark enabled. Keep him making moves. So sandwich yeah. around that mid lane. GPK. Last up in just under 20. And just, yeah, this sort of hole for VP around mid. Just making sure that... And they can do what they, they can to, to get the space on these side lanes, but... Yeah, live to win. They they know how strong they are when they just keep running at them. That's all they want to do yeah. with this lineup. No downtime. The They'll run through the books. But DM is very far forward. An oh, easy yeah. kill set up for them. He's incredibly dead down here. No escape for DM. Stream. Getting as much done as he can here with this defusal blade timing and and continue his build in a way that, yeah, just show that this like he, there's going to be no stopping Dream. He's just going to continue to to run from from lane to lane towards hero to hero. 
barely sort of spending any time stopping a hit creeps. He's, he's just looking to hunt. And they, they, they did a good job of getting... They got both towers really a pretty at an early, like early time. Like, look at their lineup compared to the VP lineup. You'd imagine VP is the one probably looking to get those towers early on. But because of these movements, lift to win. They might even get this third tower early on. Super deep aggressive wars. And we did say how this, this game is going to be a lot about, like, vision control too. With all these towers, they're, they're starting to control that pretty nicely. All of VP turns up, though. This one, they don't want to lose. They bring all five. 5v5 five five in mid. I'm being a little careful about jumping in under the tower that they know now that VP, they've brought their their whole lineup here to hold the defense. Look at this swing too. They pop the smoke and immediately draw the line to the bounty room top. Save. Trying to set up for oh. FN. FN. They've got the opening. He's able to get in with the lasso GPK. FN. Oh, he's going to be saved oh. though. Afterlife comes across clutch to give him the opportunity to jump out. Turns around with the duel. Wins it successfully onto save. They move it onto Kingstar on the back. We'll see an attempt here from the PL to try and turn things around. But the Soulbind is locking down the two of them. FN jumping in over aggressively though. Underneath the tower. DM has the raw saved and ready to pop on it. As it looked to be a. I, I mean, you, you can sort of hardly blame him for that jump in there. The, the two of them. GPK and Nightfall, Soulbound together. It looked like he was going to be able to get in and burst them. But DM, as, as soon as FN's jumped forward with that remnant, he's just completely stunned by the roar. Afterlife bailed him out of a bad scenario in the first place, too. He saved him with the press the attack initially, and then FN makes, that, makes the fight actually decent for VP. And VP, they get to keep this tower alive. Now DM's enabled to get his book two online, too. And that's a painful death. They yeah. can't lose those type of fights. I mean, look at it. L look how tempting it looks. This Batrider, nice. just a remnant or two away from death, but it wasn't enough, that remnant. Oh, that's, I mean, that's, that's a big kill for VP. They can now, they can be the ones to punch back now with their Vendetta. They're already scouting. Immersion is watched. Oh, safe. Immersion will be pretty dead. Oh, he's found it. He'll buy himself a little time in the Snowball Dream. Just watch it from the side. He knows there's nothing he can do about getting in here. This, this PL is going to show up to every fight now. Hood is online, Diffusal is online. He's very tanky. They are trying to take out this mid tower, live to win. FN should actually be able to finish it. So nice little advantage taking of him. And he does have his Maelstrom done. So he's got the sol okay. some steps of solution toward the PL, but the Hood is finished versus that Maelstrom. He knows this is going to come. Yeah, they're going to really rely on... on... On just sort of an enabling dream as well. Just allowing him to stay on a target. So they can get sort of that slow build up and this is and have the damage to, to take down some of these heroes. It's, you know, VP, that's a good swing. Yeah, they're, they're going to be able to catch some of the back lines. They find save, silence down upon him, but he's able to take it off and get the spike carapace, wasting some of the time at Dream's Shadow Dance. Over to the side, brought down into the onslaught of this PL moving in. Seneco falls in a second. Immersion trying Dream's to turn for trouble. DM, but the shards won't quite grab him. TP over from Afterlife, FN jumps in with a slight fist to finish off the kill, but now he's getting FN. slowed by the boars. Can they get him out of it? Press the attack being offered up to try and help, but Nightfall's over. FN's got one more slight of fist, but Nightfall is in on top of him, takes out FN. Nightfall's still good to go. This full HP Phantom Lancer could end up just cleaning up. Dream's out of mana. Dream's trying to run. Immersion is trying to block him off. The shards, it's not going to be enough to keep Dream safe as the doppelganger aggressively from Nightfall allows him to stay on top of the slug. He's going to start Back turning towards trap. Afterlife. I mean, this PL, it seems to become a bit too much of an issue here as they're struggling to deal with it. Save coming across, takes out Afterlife with the Vendetta hit. Nightfall able to kite the Inkswell Stone off to the side, sweeps back in onto Immersion as this PL... Certainly looking a little bit spooky for Liv to win there, even in situations where he's heavily outnumbered. They just can't quite deal with him. They can't put any attention onto him at all. He just freely went from target to target in the fight. Save 10 HP. Oh FN? my goodness. I mean, he should be dead. Oh no, he's not going to go over the slight. FN learned from no, his FN's mistakes. No he's like, I'm not chasing. He's learning. I'm not going in like that. FN has to be alive. He has to stay alive longer in these fights, too, because he is, as we mentioned many times, he is the PL solution. He's the way to clear out those illusions. Yeah. These illusions ran rampant. Dream, he popped his Shadow Dance so early in the fight, it was actually him running the entirety of the fight from that PL, pretty much. This Nightfall Epi Kid taking over completely as he's on his way toward his next item because of that. 5-0 and 5. 
what it looked like a beautiful PL game is now starting to really kick off and we're seeing it. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, as you said at the start. I mean, what do you even do as the Slark in these fights where the PL is alive and you're entirely drained of your mana? You know, you know you've got no ult to rely on. You can never stand and hit back. And you can't really itemize either to to be good against the PL as a Slark, right? You're not really a carry or a core that, that wants to be buying these illusion killing items. No, I mean, that's why they have the Ember as that last pick, right? He can't yeah. actually go for any solution for his build. He's buying just a Scotty. So, I mean, like, that's going to be pretty nice. Just this <laughs> enormous mana pool. You know, he's got 1,200 mana almost. So maybe that'll be able to help him out. But yeah, I just watched him last fight, just literally running the whole time. So I find we have to watch him to be the one to really be that sure. stable rock to deal with the PL. He cannot die early. He cannot let his mana pool go down. I mean, well, to, to the point is, you know, if, if FN does die, you think the, the fight's sort of just over? If the PL's in I the midst so. of it? Oh, I think if the PL's not like half HP or less yeah. or low mana or something like that, and FN dies, this fight is going to be disastrous for the side of Live to Win. A dream. Just going to head up here to the high ground, but man, VP, with all the info they need, they're choosing when they want to take the fight. That's, I mean, 60 seconds where they have to be cautious. They have to back away. Shadow Dance is actually so important for him to be able to reset away from these just mana burns. As, I mean, Book 3 is online now, too, for DM. And I believe... Okay, not the Manta just yet, but soon... He's on, close. ...onto Epikin, onto Nightfall. So he's going to have even more ways to create more illusions and more protection. He's just leading the charge a bit. Problematic for Liv to win. Yeah, they're not going to... See any sort of struggle here in, in, in getting that man to go done nightfall. Uh, so it's just a free tier one tower, live to win. Being very careful about how they choose to to, to get their defense going. Uh, Downtime is not good for them either on live to win. They do yeah. not want these this type of where this is just nothing is happening and the PL is just flash farming and they're forcing all the lanes in on the side of VP. Live to win they. They have to start to try to get some ball rolling here. They can't sit passively in this game, or it's just gonna it's gonna prove disastrous. It, it, it seems like a, a tricky game for Afterlife as it well, because he has to do a lot, right? It, 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 so he is the initiation, but he, he's also the one that needs to sort of be sitting back and, and, and ready to protect FN, in most of the cases, against the, the roar from DM or the lasso from GPK. He's got a lot in his hands at, at Afterlife. He doesn't. I mean, they're going to try to force this Roche. It's kind Dream of working. Sitting very low HP. He's got the uh, salve to go in, but they're ready for it. The book is swinging over. They actually have to back away. Yeah, now. and they're immediately spooked, Live to win. A half HP Roche on the table here. Versus a Beastmaster. I mean, DM's just going to walk in with the PL, and they're going to start it themselves. Now it's up to Live to win to get the wrap around. But who's they making the jump? Already. Who's getting in there? They do have Shadow Dance, so Dream could look to, to try and time it, but. Again, VP just being smart, not fully pushing to, to M Roche right now, just keeping that high ground control. Dream, he's stepping up, they'll start the fight, and already he's, at, he's out of half of his mana. He's going to look to jump over towards GPK, but GPK is able to get the lasso off. Does end up going down. Remnant across from FN looks to jump towards the back lines, and he'll find the kill on the Kingslayer. Over to the side, Raw from DM down onto Afterlife. Afterlife attempts for the TP out, but oh Nightfall's just cleaning up again. They cannot deal with this PL right now. And with that, and they got the jump too. That's the thing. Yeah. They're the ones who started the fight on the onto the bat, but it's it's on the high ground into a PL. There's just summons and illusions everywhere. They can't fully commit. Nightfall just a clicks his way to success inside the fight with the new imp, with with an imp claw that he did have from the last pickup. So high physical damage from him. And now an Aegis. Oh my god! And uh, um, um, when he's got this heart done, I mean oh the, god. the damage from FN. It's not going to be anywhere close to. To sort of killing off these illusions. This is is going to be an incredible nightmare for them to deal with. They've almost got to try and find Nightfall away from his team and in a situation where he hasn't got any illusions out if they want a chance to kill him. It's it's going to be very difficult. I mean, you're 8 0 5, and it, it really does feel like one of those games where the PL just isn't going to die. Bottom lane, FN, caught out FN here by the two too. of them. FN's having a pretty, a, a, I mean, he's 5, 3, and 10, but you feel like he's having a rough one because it feels like so much is up to him to solve the, the PL problem is things are just, things are snowballing out of control. PL is way too big. They have a hero that's just kind of useless, right? Afterlife, like, as you mentioned, the Legion just, there's not much he can do as this hero in the game. They're just starting to get sandwiched on too. The, the books are constantly being summoned. The map control is just disappearing very quickly. And 
They have to just avoid all these fights now, which is not what their lineup ever wants. The position their lineup never wants I mean, to be in with the Slark. I mean, what, what, what sort of the the game plan from Lift to win in these fights? Like, are, do you, are they telling Afterlife to, to try and find the jump to initiate, or are they telling him to sit back and uh, and sort of let VP come to them and just be ready with the save? Like, what's more important for for Lift to win to have a solid chance of winning a team fight? It feels like he actually has to be the ones to start the fights, but even if he does, like there's just there's not great targets. It's it's just the army. I, I feel like there's just there's not one thing that's gonna solve their problems because it's all now just kicked off at the same time. It's like the the illusions plus this book. I feel like the draft just feels really hard for them to actually do anything about all this. Because the vision game is, you know, this, they picked the Slark to kind of counter also, but the vision game from VP is just overwhelming for them to deal with so they can never pick and choose their battles really like that last one they forced the issue onto the high ground which is what caused the disaster for them as dream it's low on mana on this slark he's opting to to run i guess yeah couldn't go for the tp because save is around with the impale afterlife he's got a blink too he's getting stalked they'll be able to disengage though FN does at least have a BKB, but he just feels like he's so under farmed now. That'll help at least versus some of that like mana burning stuff like that. But yeah, his damage is just, it's not going to be there at all versus this PL. Yeah, the, the heart's done. It's it is. Yeah, 25 minutes in. I mean, he, he's just massive oh, on the PL nightfall. I mean, he had a, a brilliant game, game one on the Bloodseeker, and again uh, look, looking to really outdo himself here uh, with the showing on the PL as. It's yeah. his specialty, right? This yeah. is one of his heroes, as we see the platinum here, platinum PL. He loves his illusion heroes. Epileptic Kid. Oh, Dream's out of mana. Charging in. Pretty much. He's He's got to run. I mean, he knows. You, you can see, of course, with the Aegis as well. He could just go in like this, split the team up, leave heroes alone as Immersion is dealt with by the rest of VP. And they're, they're bringing in the bottom lane, ready to start taking further Tier 2s. It, it feels like there's just nothing that Live to Win can do. I feel like they just they hit their limit in the game. Earlier, they could not lose those big team fights. They couldn't. They couldn't lose momentum of this game with their draft. It, it's an. It's a full momentum draft with the Slark and the Ember versus this PL. It, it's gone to a point of just completely out of control. There's. There's really no solutions unless VP just makes, pretty much massive mistakes. This. This PL is just way too big, and way too comfortable. Oh, Twenty nine hundred HP to get through now, <laughs> yeah. with that heart. It's very hard, very hard to sort of see where that 2,900 damage is going to come from. As you know, it's just, just sort of the, su the supporting lineup around the cores. You know, they're not really heroes that, that offer any sort of significant burst damage or, or sort of over time. It's it's a lot of control, a lot of control really. I mean, on all five of them, right? They've got the means to lock people down, but they, they just don't really have the greatest of team fights, and they don't have any sort of insane amount of damage output to. To, to really commit on anyone, which is, is, is a little bit weird when, when they do have a Legion lineup. You normally expect yeah. them to sort of have some some killer hero to back up those those openings as top. Dream, again, just having to run out of here with the Shadow Dance. Done hits very him. nicely done there from Save. Not the easiest hit in a Shadow Dance, Slark, but Save, he's got it on lock there. Excellent at hold of the stunt. You even see like how much the mana burn does because he built, I mean, he built a Scotty. So that int is extremely high. Nyx is... Just loving, loving life too. Mana burns him for like 600 there. Yeah, I mean it's again. It's I think that for Splark. this game's hard for, for Dream as well. I, you know, last game it was sort of like a question about his build. I think this time round, I, I don't really know what you would build on Slark to, to make I this game any easier. I think you know, unless you were sort of going to be doing a miracle and dominating completely from the start, you, you fall behind against this PL and your life's just going to feel pretty sad playing the Slark this game. It's you, you're going to be pretty helpless. Yeah, there, I, I, there's literally nothing you yeah. can do, honestly. They, it, they had to just not lose those fights. It, it sucks to say it, but there's they just have to watch their base get destroyed because they just they have nothing to clear this out. This mana proves to be a big issue for a poor Slarky hero. As VP back away, look to finish up their next set of items. I think the what, butterfly, butterfly on the menu at least for the PL very soon. It's already had such a flawless, a literal flawless game. Feels like this might be a last effort here for Live to Win, smoking out, try to catch something and maybe get the ball rolling, get some Slark stacks and just try to find a one-by-one -one kill scenario. So that really feels like it's the only way. But VP, 
They read this. They read the situation. They smoke themselves, and they're gonna look for the fight. This uh, PL is going to. <laughs> this PL is going to destroy this fight. Yeah, I mean, Li Liptowin's gotta find some insane jump. And GPK yeah, wouldn't GPK. be bad. That could be yeah. Decent. yeah, he's got a BKB now though, so he's pretty survivable as well. Yeah, that's true, unless they, they do find that duel. And now yeah. you know it's VP on the high ground in the superior position. The smoke broken. Yep. Smoke wears off too. Illusion scouting them out. Actually, uh dropping the the scan on themselves there. They're a little suspicious of maybe someone being around with Invis, but Obviously not the case. And the smoke did come out because of uh, time rather than anyone touching it. So not able to find anything with that left to wimp. They've got to get back to base and uh, really just start to, to gear up for the inevitable of, of trying their the best to to pull off a high ground defense out against VP's push. Fight. I feel like, okay, Dream has to get like 50 stacks and then <laughs> somehow He's gonna have to just get. He has to just hit like everybody, and somehow they have to somehow isolate the PL. FN has to live the full duration of the fight somehow too. Because this is just one of the biggest uphill battles I've seen versus a PL at this stage of the game. Thirty minutes, and he almost has his butterfly now too. Versus pretty much no counter. I mean, yeah. I mean, already it feels like there's no chance of killing this PL, and yeah, every single item oh. that he gets is it's just making it so much worse for Live to Win to deal with him. Dream. He's getting surrounded here. I mean, again, save is just really nicely working around with these body blocks into the stun, meaning that the duration of the Shadow Dance just isn't enough to get Dream out of here. The Raw will be purged, but of course the Lasso, it won't. The follow-up lockdown's there. Dream's out for 60. They're going to call it. They know there's yeah. nothing that can be done against this godlike PL. As Nightfall ends 9-0-7. A...